welcome back to my studio and a very warm welcome if it's your very first time here. How lovely to have you here with me. If only you were here in person, that would be just fantastic, but this is like the next best thing, I think. We can connect um, via the magic of the internet and I think it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for all the new subscribers. That's been brilliant. I just It just keeps ticking up and it's just lovely because I feel like I'm sitting here in my little happy place and I'm sort of spreading a little bit of joy in the world. At least I hope that's what I'm doing. Um, a bit of creative happiness doesn't doesn't go amiss, really. There's lots of other stuff going on, and I just think when I come in here, I'm just surrounded by my fabrics and my threads and my creativity. <clears throat> and it's just, you know, it gives me a warm feeling in my heart, especially when you lot leave me comments and give me suggestions and ask questions and connect with me like you know person to person it's lovely so thank you for that thank you for thank you for your thumbs up if you leave me a thumbs up that helps other people to find this channel which is great and what am I talking about today I've no idea it's been a very wild weekend I don't know what the weather's been like where you are but it's been quite a wild almost like an equinoxy sort of weather really like an autumn equinox not a spring even <coughs> excuse me <coughs> I'm sorry <coughs> Like a spring, as I say, like a like an autumn equinox. It was quite wild, um, so I didn't even go out for a walk yesterday. I just thought, no, I don't feel it. it. Was like you know when the wind is blowing and it's just stirring up everything. So instead, I came down into my studio. Um, I had a couple of friends over the other day, which was lovely, uh, and they came and sat in my studio. I have a lovely big pink sofa, kind of that end of the of the studio, which I used to use a lot during um, open studios when I did open studios here in Cumbria. And we used to have loads and loads of people coming to visit us uh, when I shared my studio with a couple of other people for the for that. And my pink sofa was kind of famous because people could come in and sit on the pink sofa and just have a nice relaxing time here. So anyway, my two friends came over and that was fantastic. We were talking about all sorts of things that they're doing, that I'm doing, and it was just lovely to connect. And of course, last week, I actually went and set up my work for the exhibition that I'm doing with Fabricate. So if anybody's interested, it's in Cumbria in Egremont, and it's at a place called Florence Arts Centre and I'll leave a link below in case anybody's interested or is in the area or you're coming up for a holiday. The exhibition's on until, let me get this right, I think it's the 25th of July. I got myself a bit confused because, no, we set up on the 25th of June, it's on till the 24th of July, beg your pardon, and the, um, the art centre is open from Wednesday to Sunday, 11 till 4. As I say, you can check it out on the website, I'll leave a link below. And it was great, you know, we weren't all there because somebody was ill and somebody was on holiday. But we managed to set up most of it and then somebody else was coming in on the Sunday to finish off. And looking at what they've posted on their Instagram, it looks absolutely great. So I'm very excited about that because it was again a chance to be with other people and we share the space and we put all our work up and we're all so different. We all work in textiles but we all do totally different things. There's somebody who does beautiful printing including um, organic printing where you put um, plant material in a jar and you print fabric but she also does sort of graphic design printing you know somebody else is beautiful hand stitching somebody else is doing felt making you know we've got a weaver and, uh, and a real mix anyway a real mix although the weaver um, Jan actually isn't in this exhibition as such this time um, so it was just lovely to set up so I'm looking forward to that we've got to make the makers um, on the 10th of July again if anybody's interested I know it's a long way for us to come from America just for a couple of hours, but you know, it's worth it because you'll meet us all. <laughs> so we just basically sit with our sewing machines or our felt making gear and we sit and talk. Uh, again, that's from 11 till 2 on the 10th of July, which again is lovely. We've had some really fantastic days when people have just come and joined in and chatted and shared and it's just, you know what happens when you all get together and you talk about textiles, it's just lovely. So. That's what's happening and it's been lovely. Now I can just have a bit of a, um, a relax about it all. I've been, it's been a very easy project to work on because I've just taken one piece at a time and I have just done loads and loads of stitching basically. When you, If you go and see the work or at least when I show you the video because I'm going, intending to, I couldn't film it last week because we weren't all there. So on the 10th of July I'm going to film to show you the whole exhibition and as it's set up and, and uh, lots of nice close-ups of stitching and felting and stuff. So I'm going to film that on the 10th and um, and then I'll be able to make a video for you. So those of you who are in far-flung places around the world, you'll get to see what the fuss is all about. Okay, so today it's back to our moody landscape 
um, I've got some little basket and I've been starting to select a few little threads to use um, I'm still not quite sure where it's going it might be seed heads it might not I don't know it's been it's been very quiet um, because I've actually been busy sorting out more things in my studio as well after after setting up it's always a good time to have a good tidy up so I've been doing that as well so the little moody landscape is waiting for me over there and I think we'll just go and start off with that next okay so this is as far as I've got I've chosen to do two bigish ones, two big seed heads and the rest, the other five, are smaller and I've chosen to do them slightly higgledy piggledy so they're not marching straight across in a row and you've got some higher ones and some lower ones to look at to give a bit of, a bit of interest visually so I've chosen two different shades of stalk so they're both that lovely sort of dark um, turquoisey colour this is actually quite green when you see it on here, so the last stalk hasn't quite sort of manifested yet. I'm still working on it, and I thought, well, what I'm going to do is get these pinned on, and then I'll get some sewn on, and then we'll see where that takes us. Um, I've also, as you can see, I've used my little pieces of tiss tiss tissue paper, no, tracing paper, to create some little sort of seed heady bits that I'm going to sew on, just to make sure that I've actually got space at the top. I might actually pull that one down a fraction. It's like having things where you want them so that you've got room to stitch the extra bits on at the top there. There we go, with a little bit of leeway so you can still see the top of that bit uh, and still create a bit of interest. So this is where I'm at. I'm going to pin these on, even though I haven't got the last bit in place, I haven't got the last colour of the um, stalks, but I thought if I, if, I, if I get stuck in that place of trying to make that colour work it out, find it, whatever. I'm just going to carry on with what I'm doing and get this lot stitched down initially and then that'll be great. That'll be, we'll be on the road then. We'll be on the way and it's allowing the stalks, the stalks will do a little bit of their own thing. They'll, they'll move around when I stitch them anyway. I mean I'm going to pin them but they will move around when I stitch as well. So that's just how it is, isn't it? So I'll get this all pinned down and then we'll take it over to the sewing machine. Okay, so also I forgot, I've been looking at, for some um, threads to use and I think I'm going to be using a selection of these lovely shiny threads. I thought, keep the light, the idea of light going on this and a bit of reflection. So I've just come up with these so far, whoops, <laughs> and we'll see what I end up using as we go along. Okay, so I'm all set up for free machine embroidery here. If you haven't done this before, I have got a little video um, in my playlist which tells you how to start off if you've never done it before. But basically, I've got an embroidery foot on or a darning foot. I've lowered my feed dog teeth underneath and I do lower my top tension as well a little bit. I do lower my top tension. Uh, but that's just personal to my machine, your machine, I'm sure will be fine. And I put my stitch length onto zero. So that's quite easy. Now, what you'll notice, possibly, is that, guess what? I've got all turquoisey, uh, teal sort of coloured stalks. So they're either lighter or darker, and that's really simple. And that just came to me. I just thought, oh, actually, I don't think I want a third colour. I just want it to be the same. So I'm just going to start stitching down the stalks, for starters. And you can see, sorry, I should have shown you that better. I've just flipped up. I wanted to keep these in the place so I know where they're going but I'm just going to flip that up because obviously the stalk needs to go underneath. So we're just going to get these stitched down with a bit of free machine embroidery. Now if you can't do free machine embroidery don't worry you can probably do most of this project you know just with your normal foot on. Right, I'm just getting my pedal in the right place, not quite in the right place there. out mm, I've just got things at the back here getting in the way there we go I'm just basically using the same color thread and am I going to do it across the bottoms as well? No.
we go. So that's the first one done. So I'll just stitch the other ones in place and then we'll get on to doing the heads. Okay, so I have stitched all the stalks down. Now they're a little bit fraying and I've ended up doing four lines of stitching and I will I will play around with those. I might trim them down a little bit. I might be able to heat gun them a little bit. We'll see what happens. I'm not really worried about it. I'm being bold with this piece. It's just going to be what it's going to be. Now the interesting thing was I thought I was going to be using all sorts of different coloured threads to stitch down the seed head bit but turns out the best thing to use for me on this piece is this lovely silver thread that I used to stitch down the water with. So that's what I'm going to do and it actually keeps it nice. It means we've got a bit of continuity going along here with the colours and then this is going to keep it really simple. I seem to be working honestly at the moment with light and dark um, and just really keeping things very very simple. So let's see where this gets us to. Pull this pin out. Now obviously you might want to bond web these down, you know, feel free to do so. I'm quite happy just to let the fabrics move a little bit and tell their own story. But if you feel safer with Bondi web or something like that, then please, you know, go ahead. Be my guest. There's no right or wrong way of doing any of this. It's entirely up to you. Let's just get that down. <clears throat> I'm just so thrilled, to be honest, to be getting to this bit. Um, it's really quite exciting. So the question is, how am I going to do the next bit? off here. Here we go. I'm not saying much because I'm concentrating. It's quite a lot of concentration going on here. Now obviously you know you might want to draw these out onto your piece of fabric before you just set off like this in this, in this giddy way. But I have to say Sometimes it's just nice to take a risk and just go for it. I'm going to go back along here and then I'm actually going to go outside the seed head like this. I always think that's quite nice to go outside of whatever you're stitching and I'm not sure whether I'm going to do those twice. No, I think we're just going to do those once and then we're going to stop it there. Do I need to go across there once more? Mm, no, I don't think I do. I think we'll just do it like that. And then, so this is going to be nice and easy for doing all the seed heads in the same colour. I can just, you can lift up your foot or sometimes you don't need to if you just turn your wheel a little bit. You can actually get the thread to go with you. And then you can just start off again. Make sure your foot's down though. So let's do another one and then I will show you the rest when it's done. So here we go. I have stitched all of the seed heads on and all of the stalks are down now. Now if you look closely, right, if you get really close up with this, you'll see lots and lots of wobbly lines, nothing's perfect. But the overall impression is that it looks quite pretty and quite shiny. There's a lot of light sparkling up here. And as I say, you know, each line, nothing has to be perfect. And the more lines you do, 
the better the effect is because you're just looking at the whole thing you're not going to go and get your microscope onto each bit so you know if you looked at each of these you'd be going oh my goodness that's not very good but as a whole collective thing that's the beauty of free machine embroidery it just it just pulls it all together by magic somehow so got the stalks got the heads now you're looking down here and you're thinking it's not quite ready yet it's not quite done there's too much pink down here as somebody famously said there's too much pink so what I've done is I've decided I'm going to cut some sort of leafy shapes they're kind of leafy shapes they're not leaves as such for the for each plant they're just kind of um grassy shapes I do, do I mean leaf I mean grass leafy grass whatever and I'm going to cut them in this lovely dark colour the lovely dark turquoisey colour and I'm just going to put them on quite randomly and there'll be a mixture so because I've got just simple colours it'll look effective and then you'll really it'll really help this bit sort of shine out so I've got I've got this lovely lighter coloured turquoise as well which I'm going to cut and I'm going to just cut some lovely leaves as I say and I will then get those stitched on and I'll show you when it's all done. Well, there we go. I think it's finished. I can't quite believe it myself. It's nothing like what I would have imagined it was going to be like. Um, it's just grown and developed with each stage. It's just quite extraordinary. I'm just blown away by it. It shows me actually how, or why I should say, why the background had to be so simple. Because obviously it's got this very busy bit down here in the foreground now, which is not, um, in, and that just came really. I did this, I did the seed heads as I showed you, and then actually I went back and added more silvers to them so that give them a bit more definition and a bit more life. Because they were, very, I just did single stitching to start with. Um, to show the sort of lines on there and that just wasn't enough when I did the leaves or the grasses down here suddenly that just wasn't enough and I really got into the stitching down here and I went back and I stitched over the stalks a lot more it was almost like I had to just kind of relax into it let go once I'd got things held in place I could then just do lots of free machine embroidery to get them just just have fun really actually I just really enjoyed doing that bit and with I, dare I show you the back shall I show you the back oh my goodness look at this it's chaos on the back <laughs> so you can see down here that I actually took each stalk and I tucked it up inside so that um, there'd be no messy edges down here because I just thought a lot of cut edges down here would be very distracting one or two would be fine but all of them would be too much but look at this it's rather like ghosts I've got like little ghosts of grass going up here that's really quite fun so I had to do a lot of cleaning up because, the, as I say, these fabrics did fray quite a bit. Um, so I did a combination of lots of stitching, a little bit of trimming with a, you know, a really small pair of, of embroidery scissors down, down the sides like this just to get the fringy bits off. And then I also used my heat gun, which is a very useful tool when you're working with these man-made fibres. And luckily it didn't do anything to the background, it just took away some of the, the raw edges down here. And I just, you know, I could have used Bonder Web or uh, another fusible webbing, obviously, but I felt I just wanted it to be free. Um, I'd much rather that the fabrics moved. You see, you get these little ruckles. If you do it with Bonder Web, it does tend to look incredibly flat. And what I like about this is all the textures going on. We've got lots of different textures. We've got this pink coming through. We've got the, you can still see the sort of movement in the water behind. That's not completely flat. Um, and I'm just really chuffed. It's been an extraordinary journey. I wouldn't, as I say, have expected this to be the outcome. Um, it's just blown my socks off again, really. And the colours, and I'm just going to, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, is I'll pop it on here. I'm just going to pop it onto the, um, um, that's the only uh, background I've got at the moment. So I'm actually going to put it on a frame like that, you see. Let's just see if you can see that better. Yeah, you're going to, I'm going to have it framed up like that eventually, so... So I think that's it for today, and who knows what next week will be. We will find out next week. Um, I'm not doing any work for my exhibition, so I'm totally free to do this until I get um, settled into whatever I'm going to be doing next um, in that direction. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for sharing this journey with me. Do let me know what you think and what your favourite bits are or bits that you would have done differently. And I will see you again in my studio next week. I'm wishing you a very peaceful week and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.
Bye-bye.